bad. We got a little deer. Life is good on the bait pile. Good grief. He's what I thought he was. Well, the answer to the big question. Did I get him? I guess growing up in the 80s, I became a real tree baby real quick and dreamed of heading to the North Country. Snow on the ground, cold temperatures, bundled up, big bucks, staying in a cabin. I definitely became a Saskatchewan fan. Eh? I'm glad for Mr. Mike Grooms of G&G Taxidermy. Mounting all those big Canadian heads over the years, he's made a couple connections, and when some of those last minute hunt opportunities come down the pipe, I have been known to be tempted. I'm heading to Saskatchewan, Canada, and I can't hardly stand it waiting to get there. I think the biggest thing about this trip, other than sitting in the cold, is gonna be trying to get everything in here into this suitcase and two carry-ons. That's gonna be a big challenge, but I'm looking forward to being on a guided hunt and not having to rack my brain where to hunt this whole week. He's gonna put, put us in the stand, and hopefully I'm gonna put all this in this suitcase here. It's November the 11th. We have made it up here to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Now, I just got off the phone with Nicole. It's 71 degrees down in North Carolina. It is absolute zero right here. A good snow's falling. It's good western dry snow, champagne powder. We're waiting on the outfitter to pick us up. We're all excited. We can't stand it. We're gonna be heading north about three hours up towards Spiritwood. Got a lot of country to see. Everybody's talking, the big, this is the year for the big bucks. Last year it was warm, not a lot of deer were killed, saved a lot of lives. This year they're alive, big deer are showing up on the trail cameras, and the weather's perfect. So they say, whew, gracious. The first night in camp, the outfitter gets everybody down in the living room. And let me tell you, the photos he's got, they just get you mouth watering. They put all the stands name in a hat and you draw with fingers crossed. Day one, Saskatchewan. Got about seven hours of sleep, pretty good. Gonna be sitting in the cold today. Just made my bed. I want to show you what we did last night. I pulled out his tag for him for today. They draw straws for Stan. He's got Ridgeline. I've got Mill Lake. 
we're gonna see how these two spots pan out. We'll have about a nine hour sit. Looking forward to what's gonna come out of this old big bush up here in Saskatchewan. When you're in the deep woods of that northern Canadian bush country, there is an excited, eerie anticipation <laughs> that runs all over. I've always heard a good rule to live by in Canada is don't pass up on the first day what you'd shoot on the last day. And I did. to find a more beautiful dream hunt than this, but those long, cold hours in the stand, you start to get a little bit mental and you're liable to start talking to yourself. High protein foods that the outfitters provide that northern deer herd actually save more deer than are taken throughout the province in the hunting season. We had gone through two draws and you hunt each stand two days in a row. Now it's down to the last night of the draw. We had one more day to hunt. It is day five of our trip. We still got two tags to, tag, to use today. And guess what? I've just got a feeling one of us <laughs> is gonna do it today. It's warmed up. We've been Bruce, in every morning about five, question? six degrees. Today it's 20 plus, so. This could be the day, Jeff. And that's gonna be passing on the 150, 60s. Like, somebody I know did the first day. You. Let's do it. We are staying alive here on day number five up in Canada. I'm in a stand today called Pasture. It's probably our last full day to hunt here. Hopefully, we're gonna have a different outcome today.
after nearly 40 hours in the stand asking myself why in the world did you pass up that first day buck, I can guarantee you when that last day buck stepped out, I was ready to shoot and highly shook up. You talking about being tore slap out of frame up here in the stand. If you could have videoed this whole thing, what I was doing, it looked like a circus in this tree stand. I've never in my life. If it could have gone wrong, it went wrong. But if one thing went right, it's this deer over here, and he's down. He's a Canadian bruiser, gonna become a North Carolina loser. But I'm telling you what, I've never been, never. I say it every time, but I think I get worse with age. I've never been so tore. <laughs> I sit here on my 45th hour in the stand. Alright, I've just hit the ground here. I can't stand it. I got to go look at it. pasture stand here in Canada, fifth day. He's laying right over here. Let's go see what he looks like. Well, I walked over to where I took the first shot and what did I find but half of his rack. No blood. Yes, I did hit a tree limb. Well, here I am, propped up to this big moose of a Canadian deer. Good gracious, he's what I thought he was. He's the deer that's been using this area. And man, I have never been shook up so bad by a deer. Especially when the fact that he didn't want to play nice and get on my camera. Oh, but we've got the, uh, got the rack pieced back together here. And man, I want you to look at some of that healthy genes right there. That's why people come all the way to Saskatchewan. And in particular, this last minute trip worked out for us to come up here with Otter Creek Outfitters with Ron LaVoy. And man, he does the work, does his homework, puts the time into it, gets the right guides. I got Cal, Mr. California back here filming me right now. Man, I appreciate it. Cal told me on the way in here, it's my first day hunting. He said, they've been seeing a nice 160 inch 10 pointer on camera. Well, he came out at lunchtime today. 10 to 2 is a hot time here in Canada. And I can't be going back to North Carolina with a bigger smile on my face than this time. Whew. It all happened fast, but I'm just glad that it happened. And now for CTO's Moment of the Week. Sponsored by Dead End Game Calls. Oh, Nicole on the phone there. She's coming home from work in the traffic, wishing she was going to play with some large waterfowl, tender swan like we are. Head to the east coast of North Carolina near. Lake Phelps and Madame Ski. This is an exciting event. It's the largest CTO event that takes place every year. It's right here in Eastern North Carolina. These big white uh, 747s flying through there. We'll see you early in the morning.
this memory right here will be one to tell the grandkids. Nine years ago tomorrow, 2003, November 17th, I shot my first Canadian whitetail at lunchtime. Nine years later, November 16th, at lunchtime, my heart was panting again. And uh, it's been a wonderful trip again up here to Ron LaVoy's at uh, Otter Creek Outfitters. Thank you, Cal. I really like the stand I drew for the last day. Got in there real early for daylight, but when the sun came up, beautiful place. Sort of a cut over to my right and some timber to my left, as they refer to the bush. We're down to the last afternoon. I had sat there all morning, saw some small bucks, nothing that really impressed me. But I looked to my right, and there he comes, and it was a wow buck. I knew he was going home with me. It's day five of our trip. It is 2.37, and I just shot an ice bug. <sighs> My heart was pounding. I'm at Whiskey Jack stand at Otter Creek. I've got to go see if I killed it. I don't know if he jumped. I hope he's dead. I know it's been a long week. Almost 10 days, 10 hours a day in the stand. After sitting there for over 40 hours, when I walked up on him, man, it was worth every minute of bone chilling cold. This is day five of my trip. And uh, I met this young man here at 2.37 of day five in Saskatchewan at Otter Creek Outfitters. What a great time we have had. I tell you what, you want an experience, you come up here. You won't be treated like a stranger, you'll be treated like family. And if it wasn't for the snow and the cold, I thought I'd been on a cruise ship with all the good food I've been eating. And Blake brought me out here today. I tell you, the confidence level had dropped about zero on the tank. And uh, I, kept, I kept waiting for them to take their bedroom slippers off and get out of bed and come and see me. Well, this fella finally did. I saw him coming through the thicket at two, about 2.35. I let him get to the bait pile. He ran some does off and smaller bucks. I guess he's gonna eat a bit, but I've been watching does and bucks chase all day long. It's been exciting. If you want a hunt of a lifetime, you get up here and you will enjoy yourself. Isn't that nice? This deer is not a booner, but he is now a member of the Bryant household. I've got a place on the wall. He's gonna spend the rest of his days very proud. Great trip, great guide today. Thank you, Mr. Blake.